Hello everybody, welcome back once again. On board we have with us Nora. With me and myself, welcome Nora uh, once again on this platform. Uh, she has uh, taught us perfection earlier and again she will be teaching us perfection. Perfection is a method to know the future before it happens. Mara, she says that this method is more than 500 years old and found in the Arabic books. I hand uh, over the mantle to Nora to explain further. Welcome, Nora. Welcome, Nora. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be with you, and I am very happy to share uh, this uh, method. Uh, okay. Um, from the moment that I started to study astrology, I was looking for an easy method to uh, teach to other people and to do myself the most simple method that was possible. Um, I find in the books, in the Middle Age books, and uh, Juntin of Florence, that uh, he was doing a recapitulation and copy from the older books from Arabic uh, astrologers like uh, uh, um, Ali ben Rajel in uh, 1500 years ago. Okay. But what I know that uh, make you make uh, me very happy is the Arabic uh, astrologers, they were taking the ideas, the methods, and the philosophy from the Indian astrologer before them. Okay. Uh, I uh, find that uh, one of these astrologers was Manu, that uh, he wrote the Manu Shamita, but in the Surya uh, Prajapati is where he talked about the sun, the, mov the movement of the sun, the astros, and uh, some uh, movement in relation with the nakshatra. Okay. Personal, I don't read this book, but I have all these uh, methods that come from Arabic. Then, uh, the name is Profections because his pro is uh, before and factions is enriched with a fact. The root of the words is the same that prophet. The, okay, the, 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 the other slides, please. The perfection work moving only the planet. The signs the sign of the zodiac are fixed. The planet moving one sign every year in cycles of 12 years. This is not in relation with the cycle of Jupiter because uh, it's all the planet and the lagna that are moving. It's in relation with the 12 signs of the zodiac. Okay. Uh, can no. you pass the other? Yes. The, the method is exactly the same as the clock. When you look the clock, it's the same phase, but you have the hours, mm -hmm. minute, and the second exactly in the same way. It's only that the timing is changed. In the chart, doing this method, we have exactly the same. We have first the years. When we find the years, we go to the months, and when we find the months, we go to the days. But it's always the same chart. It's always the same clock. Then this is what makes the method is very easy. Uh, we work with the Rasi chart, but you can use in the in the divisional, or you can use whatever. It's question to do search because the method is good. We find the year. The sign of the year is where the natural grassy chart is in relation with the age. The age is not the same that the year that we are. If we have 15 years old, we are in living in the 16 year because the year finished with a birthday. 
what is interesting in the year is that you need to look where the planets are for the year and what is the rulers of the sign. Once you have, I am going to fast? No. No, you fast. Perfect. Okay. Once you have the year, when you have the year and you know that the year, if, if the person was born in, uh, in uh, Gemini and it's in the third year, then will be in Leo. Then the months are going to start from there, from Leo, not where it ascended. Okay. okay. Then in the second month will be Virgo. In the third month will be Libra. Yeah. Then the planets are the first, uh, the first movement was in relation with the years. But now we are going to the months. And because every month has 30 days approximately, we take the 30 degrees of the sign to find the days. Once you find the days, you are going to look the transit. Because the transit are going to give the last word. Yeah, you can put this, uh, yeah, go with the other. Okay, then here is the Grace Kelly chart. I take only the planet Venus to, to show you how the, the planets are moving in, uh, in the year, okay? The okay. Yeah, I would like if you ask me questions because I don't know if it's clear. For me, it's very easy. No, no, it's, it's crystal clear. It's nice. crystal it's clear now. Clear, yeah. I have understood. Now, uh, for Grace Kelly, she has Venus in the first year of uh, life okay. but the age is zero and she is going to have the same position for the 12th year of life or the 24 year of life then the the Perfect. position or the, the things repeat every 12 years yeah. mm -hmm. but the transit are different yes then this is what gives the, the interest. Okay, in this chart, suppose that she is in the third year. In the third year, Venus is in Sagittarius. Then this Venus is going to be in conjunction with the natal Saturn in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Then if, uh, in the fifth year, this yes. is going to move conjunct the moon. Yes. Yes, for our audience, have a good look on the first, first chart. part of the chart. She has, uh, Nora has marked all the planets of a natal chart in red inside the box. Exactly. So, so on her Lagna, her Lagna is uh, Libra, she has Sun, Ketu, Mercury, Venus on her Lagna. Exactly. Mars is in Scorpio, oh. Saturn in Sagittarius, Moon Aquarius. in Aquarius, Ra Rahu A in Aries, and a retrograde Jupiter in Taurus. Yes, in the in the slides that is coming now, we have the chart. Okay. Okay. And this is the method. This is the method. Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfectly clear. Okay. Can we go to the chart. Yes, we've come to the chart. Okay. Then, um, as you see here, Venus, the R, because she is a, she was a very important actress in. Uh, United States at some moment, she was completely different than the other kind of act actress. She was very elegant and she was mm -hmm. very, uh, she, she was, uh, I cannot say that she was shy, but uh, she was not in uh, putting in front the body, was more a smarter actress. 
she was uh, working in many different uh, mystery movies. Okay. Okay. And she was this kind of uh, secret personality that she doesn't say too much. And what is interesting is you see that you, she has Saturn in the third house. Yes, so she kept quiet. She kept quiet and she was more acting than uh, talking. The thing is that she was uh, born in a wealthy family and their parents didn't want it that she was an actress. Um, but she started to act in the school. Uh, 22 years she moved from uh, up to New York and um, Venus, the Libra, to Cancer. When she was discovered like actress, this Venus was conjunct with the Aruda, Aruda Lagna. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very interesting. Um, when, uh, um, and you see in 52, the Venus de Libra came with the sun and with Mercury again in the Lagna and it's when she started really to become an actress, a famous actress. The fame, okay. yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll go back to this chart again. Uh, in 52, she would be um, 20, uh, she would be 21, 22, right? So yes. Because the other thing in, uh, in this uh, thing is that you need to know that is happening the year it start in the birthday, and the birthday is yeah. January 1st. Then okay, the 23. happen before or after, but this is the delicatessen of the, of the method. Yeah. Okay. So it will be, uh, okay, when it comes back, if, since you said that she would come back to it, so if we superimpose it on the chart, she's 22, 50, 52, she's 24 years of age. When it is coming back, Venus is coming back on the Lagna. Yeah. In, as for perfection, Venus is coming back to her Lagna in that age. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then the, the the most interesting thing that I find is that she needed to do a choice between the career and marriage, and this I think that was the most important uh, thing that happened in her life. Okay. Then uh, um, in the in the other slide, and go to the other. Okay. Okay. Uh, she was uh, for a movie. She was in the Cannes Cannes Festival. That is a very important. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Then she was there, and uh, she needed to do photos for the publicity, for the advertising, for her, for the movie. The movie was in relation with a thief. That was something that is secret, and it's uh, happening in the night, and everything was in the Scorpio. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fifty-four. Yes. Yeah. Then, in uh, when uh, she was doing the photos in the palace, she met the the prince, the prince of Monaco, Reniero, the Monaco. The the thing that is very interesting in the monarchy there is that the principal is very small. I don't know if it's uh, fifteen kilometers of uh, wide. It's a piece in the south of France, and the the only, the only, uh, uh, how to say, uh, the only thing that they need to start to become independent is that the prince need to have a son and pass the crown. If it's not baby, if it's not descendants, this principate need to come back to France. Then, okay. at the moment that she met the prince, the prince was looking for a wife. Okay. Then um, I find that it's very interesting what happened because I see the prince like a Mars, very powerful, but poor. <laughs> when 
the thing was uh, he was very interested and he proposed to her but uh, I don't know if she says that they needed to talk with the father or is in the, all the things related with the royalty that they need to ask her for the hand of the girl yes, yes. the question is that he went to New York he needed to go to New York then okay. he went with a boat okay. Martin Scorpio yeah, okay. And sailing across the ocean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that when he did the proposal, Mars was conjunct with the moon in Aquarius. He wants to see the family. Okay. Yes. A family and spouse, Aquarius. Exactly. But Mars at the moment was in Aquarius. The perfected Mars was in Aquarius yeah. in conjunction with the moon. I, I find that this is extraordinary, you know, to find these small details in the in the things. Things, yes. The question is that they married and was something that was incredible, was in TV, was more similar to the wedding of uh, the Prince William and Kate. And okay. One of the things that was interesting is that the dress that she has was very similar to the dress of Kate. Okay. <laughs> Then, uh, you see here, uh, in uh, 55, Mars in Aquarius came to support uh, for the wedding. Okay, Mars in Aquarius in 55, okay. Yeah. Then in 1957, she has the first girl, the first uh, uh -huh. children, okay. the two years after. And this bring that she start to bring the Americans to Monaco, the, the actors and the rich people, they start to discover the, this area of the France that is beautiful. But I think it was after the, um, after the years of, uh, that Europe was very poor. Um, then the, the ladies in America start to marry the aristocrats in Europe. Okay. So, so I think I'll just for a moment, uh, I'll, Nara, I'll go back to this chart here, perfection, perfect chart, so that people can understand because 1957, as you said here, 1957 is a perfected seventh house chart. Yes. Okay. Fifth year, perfected fifth year, so we can see from here that perfected fifth year Venus was on moon and in the house of family and spouse yeah. and also in the house of uh, Aquarius that is gains so people uh, she has got people from abroad she's broadening the horizon she's getting people into her uh, loop so it's also about new ideas new new inventions opening up new horizons for her country and homeland yes yeah. yes Yes, and Aquarius is a sign of communication too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's also an expansive house, it's expansion. So she has opened up the land for others to come in and, you know, okay. intermingle. Exactly. Then um, it's a very interesting country because uh, the people don't pay tax. You know that? Oh, oh. Mm. Tax, uh, yes, yes. It's a very interesting country in, in this uh, way because the casino, the casino of Monaco, paid the tax for all the people that are living there. The other thing that is very interesting is that you cannot go there and ask for the nationality. They don't give. Okay. Because they don't have more land. Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. So, coming back to our uh, chat, We've done the 57th year. So as we move on to the next chart. Yeah. Grace Kelly, uh, we, yeah. she has two more children. Yes, she has two more children. And the second, that is Albert, is the prince today because the, the father died too. Okay. The, okay. Uh, she, she has a stroke driving 
and oh. uh, she, she arrived, I think, I don't know sure if she arrived to the hospital and she was dead or she died immediately after. She was with one of the daughters, that the daughter that is the seven house. Okay. okay. And it, it seemed that they were having a very difficult discussion, the two of them. Okay. The of the accident, then whatever. The accident is Mars, the car. Okay. And, and Mars is in the sixth house with Rajo in Aries. Venus okay. is in Pisces. Okay. Saturn is in Cancer. That Cancer is the tenth house. Yes. So coming back to this chart, Mars moves on to the sixth yeah. house, seventh house with Pisces. Okay, it's, it becomes a Marika planet, the second lord in the seventh house, again it becomes a Marika planet. Venus moves into Pisces, that is the end of life. Yes, and that's the last sign, yes. And Saturn moves into the eighth house. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and it's Cancer, that is one of the worst places for Saturn too. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Yeah, at this moment, the transit, I put the transit there too, because Jupiter was in Libra, the, the Lagna. Saturn mm -hmm. was in Virgo, the, the, I don't know what I said to Mars, seven, yes. 11 of Mars. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, I cannot see it like uh, the, the, Okay, uh, can you see the slide now? Yeah. The slide? I, I, at the, the bottom of the slide, I cannot see what, what I wrote. Oh, wait. Okay. okay. Mars is at two degrees in Scorpio, that is the same position that Mars in Rasi. And then, okay. Then it's uh, really, you can see really that uh, was the moment for the accident. She was in a six year. Hmm. So that is that six year you've told me earlier also is a dicey year when everything is topsy turvy. Exactly. Yeah. She was in the six years of life. Yeah. Okay. So I, this is. We can go to another chat. Yes, Picasso. Yeah. Do you have questions about this one? Uh, no. About Chris Kelly? No. Uh, I have understood and uh, it perfectly well. And uh, which is what about you? I'm understanding it. Yes, yes. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. You are a smart people. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Uh, this is a Picasso uh, chart. Um, I was very surprised with I saw the chart because I didn't find that was something important in the chart for this kind of personality that was very important in our in our uh, life in relation with the art. But what I find is that Venus is in the fourth house. Yes. And uh, the sun is in the fifth house. The fifth house is in relation with Leo. Jupiter is in the twelfth mm. house in relation with Pisces. Saturn, yes. the 11 in relation with Aquarius. Then I find that this, this uh, really tell me that this is a very important, strong uh, chart. chart. Okay. In, general, in general, in Western astrology, we look at the planet in the sign. But here I discovered that the chart start to talk when I put the planet in the houses in relation with the lagna and this is the reason that the lagna is so important. Okay. This is my discovery. Okay. Then, uh, for uh, Picasso, is uh, as you see here, when, uh, when uh, as between six and seven years old, he start to take really to start to learn professional uh, painter with the father. Because the father was an artist. Okay. 
um, the one of the first words that he talk uh, that uh, is a family that say was lap or lapis lapis is a pencil in Spain okay he was asking mm -hmm. for a pencil in the when Venus came to Scorpio at 15 years old he started to have the formal instruction in R. At 18, mm -hmm. at 18, then it's 12, 13, 14, um, let's say, 18. And 18 years old, the moon... 18, yes. Yes. The moon would... Uh, the moon would uh, be in Germany? Yes. So 18, uh, I don't know it's in relation with the date of birth, but it's around that. Uh, it's around that. Uh, yeah. Whatever it is, the moon passed from Pisces to Aries, that is a big change because they start again with something different. It's when he moved to Madrid, the capital of Spain, to study really with the master in the time the moon in, in uh, when the moon con the moon continues to touch the, the planet and he was a very uh, was very difficult for him to find really home home and the moon is in Scorpio then every time that the moon was touching the different planet he was changed residence until okay. that he find that he was okay in Paris. In Paris, he find some kind of home, not because the place, but because the people, the moon, that was there. They were artists and, and writers and philosophers like a Sartre or a Cocteau or the figure of these people. There was all a generation there and was not the traditional people, the moon in it. The other thing that is very interesting is in the way that he was painting or he was working was not a consistence, was something that was a lot of change. And if I find that Venus is the, the planet of R and is in Mercury, in, uh, in Virgo, Virgo, Virgo has the duality, then he was changed all the time, the techniques, and trying and doing search until the end of the life. <laughs> okay. okay, so that means Picasso is the one who is, because he's keeping on changing his techniques, this is because Venus is the duality of sign, because yes. of the dual sign. Yes, yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Mercury, a Mercury in a Scorpio is a Mercury that is always doing search. Okay. Yes. Mercury is a, is a sign of not the investigation like uh, Virgo, but is the going deep in the unconscious and in the in the symbols or in the figures or the what they talk with the people in the unconscious. Then this is the reason that he was painting with symbols. The, the way that he was painting was very difficult sometimes to understand for the people. Okay. 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 Yes. Perfect. So uh, we can move on to uh, yeah. the chart of Henry Ford. Okay. Henry Ford is Everybody knows the, the, the car, everybody. Yes. But uh, what is uh, very interesting is his personality, and it's very interesting that he was the first one that uh, do a car not for the rich. He did a, a car for the middle class people. And okay, yes. And uh, was a very interesting philosophy that uh, it has. Uh, okay, you want to go to the 
Next one. Yes. So, uh, okay. The, the Mars that uh, will be the car, Mars is in Leo, fire. Okay. Okay. And uh, the the other thing is the, the, the cars that can be the four, the four, the four house and the third house, the, the third house is movement but in this case it's uh, ruled by Venus, then this is the reason I suppose that he tried to do the car that were cheaper, not Lux car, because Virgo is not a sign of expansion, it's a sign okay. of uh, organization, uh, clean and secure, but it's uh, not Lux. Uh, he he has this uh, Rahu in uh, Scorpio that I think is what he gives the, the curiosity and the search in a sign of Mars that is the car or the mechanical exactly the mechanical because he loves to take a look to the watch how the watch was working. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to the years that you have done for him. Yeah. Then, at uh, 30 years, the seven year of perfection is when he go, the first six house are the personal six house. The seventh house is the first house that we have relation with others, exterior. It's yes. When he was 30 years old, that he had opportunity to go with his ideas outside okay, okay. but the change started how he was in the eighth house mm -hmm. the eighth house saturn the character of work saturn mm -hmm. was Pisces. yes okay. the eighth then this yes show that is uh, the last step of a change, the last step of the, the, the search, the transition, yes, yes, transition movement. Exactly, exactly. Then this Saturn went to here. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, is there in uh, when he was around thirty-three years old? that he met Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was another inventor, but was more yes. successful at the time, was more successful to him, and he had the money. Then they start to work together, and uh, he, uh, I suppose that he had uh, money to start to do this kind of investigation in this car that they as they call T. T car, okay. Marty. Okay, take up. Yeah. In uh, 1901, Mercury was to the third house. And Mercury, that is in Cancer, was to the third house. That is Saturn and Venus and Jupiter. It's, okay. it's the, the moment that is to do the production with Saturn and the, 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 he has the support, Jupiter, and he has uh, Venus the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. In um, 1903, he started to take risks. Okay. okay. Was house with the moon. Mm -hmm. In Capricorn. Capricorn is not a sign of gambling. It's a sign that be careful. Then at uh, this moment, in 1903, is when he start to uh, uh, do put in a, in a, start to do the in quantity in quantity. Okay. It, to do the car for the people, for the, for everybody, they needed to be something that was not expensive. Uh, this is the other reason that Venus is in Capricorn. 
-hmm. to be very organized under Saturn. This, uh, the car that he did, the first car, and this was the reason that it was so, so popular that everybody was uh, start to use his car and not the other brands, is that the, in the 2015, they did a calculation how much will be the car, and was $7,000. Uh, and it's really cheaper. In the, yes. in the 1918, the car, this was the most popular. Then the 2nd of Mars, the car, the 2nd of Mars is in Virgo again. Yes. Then it's practical, it's cheap, everybody like it, economical. And hmm. I, I I don't know really if the history says I, but I um, uh, old person, he has one of these first cars. And he said that when they have a problem with a wheel and was not, uh, you know, the wheel was flat, they put whatever thing inside of the wheel to make around and the car was working uh, the same, you know? Yeah, so, so, um, and then as we move forward 208 years. Yes, the, the thing is that he has mercury in cancer, Then more he was getting old, he started to have problems with the brain, and uh, he started to become more, uh, uh, difficult or uh, he was uh, he was very paternalist he gave a lot of uh, benefits to these employees but, okay. but they were in his control he was uh, he was having some kind of policeman to know or, or do the investigation about the the personnel that were working with him it was very okay in this size because he needed the people need to do the things like he wanted okay okay this is venus in, um, in capricorn i think too very controlling mm. mm -hmm. okay. the, uh, when i he tried this i don't find too much uh, documentation but he tried to do a, an avion too to fly okay in uh, in uh, 45 the company has problems because he loses the control of the company he has brain problems then they okay. give, they, they give the time to try to solve something and this uh, after he was second uh, and he was dead uh, from uh, cerebral hemorrhage the problem with the brain oh. yeah Okay, so he, uh, okay, when, this is of Jonas Kepler's theory, the mathematician, yes, and yeah. you found this? I, okay. I find his chart made by himself, but I went to look uh, for the position of the planet, and I find that he was using the tropical zodiac, the tropical zodiac in the time that he was doing the chart because the tropical uh, zodiac move. The uh, sidereal zodiac is always the same. The tropical is moving in the, in the our uh, system. Okay. Then, here, uh, here is the chart. Mercury is in Sagittarius. I look Mercury because I think that for mathematics uh, and astronomy and astrology, we need a very good Mercury. And Mercury is in Sagittarius. But it's interesting that he never stay in the same place, too. 
he needed to, in relation with the political Jupiter, ruler of Mercury, the politicians and the politicians made that he needed to change the place that he was living many times. Okay. Then, um, here you have something that uh, 18 years old, is, uh, he starts to study philosophy and theology and mathematics in a Christian um, college. And it's okay. because, because the Christian uh, philosophy that he has problems in uh, another countries. Okay. At 22 years old, the, the house, Mercury, is, con is, is in contact uh, with Mercury. Mercury is become with Saturn. It's uh, when he, uh -huh. he wrote, he wrote uh, the first uh, documentation the book that was specific about the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, is, I think that he was studying an eclipse and was at the same time that it was his conjunction on Jupiter and Saturn. And he find the, the, the completely that these two planets really are the most important in astrology. It's the first documentation that an astrologer, medieval astrologer, that talked about the importance of Jupiter and Saturn, like a planet. Uh, okay. okay. When uh, he had 23 years old, the lagna was with the moon. Okay. 23 years. Yeah. Uh, yes. the 25 years old, then two more signs. Okay. The. Um, wait a second. Yeah, the moon was in the 12th house, but when he passed uh, one more uh, sign is when he married the first time. Then uh, the moon was. The moon lost in Lagna. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, 29 years old, sixth house, he met Pico Brahe. Pico Brahe was an astrologer too, uh, the scientist. Uh, and sixth house, he started to work for Pico Brahe. He was, okay. Yeah. He was not uh, in the equal level. He was top as he was working for. Then he was working for someone six house. Uh, mm -hmm. 30, 33 years old in the ninth house, he discovered the supernova in the relation with Jupiter Saturn. This was a very important discovery. Yeah, okay, so and that's also in the house again of uh, Aquarius, wherein you have new ideas, inventions, everything happening. That is 33rd year, ninth house is, for him will fall in Aquarius, so that is so important, supernova, yes. Futuristic, Aquarius is futuristic. Future, yes, future. Uh, when uh, he uh, was in the 10th house, because when I say that the 10th house, if you move all the planet to the 10th house of each of the planet, is there that you are going to find why this uh, is Mars in relation with the calculation, Mercury in relation with the calculation, the ellipse is in relation with astronomy, with the stars, then it's, it's a lot of things that happen at the same time. It's not only one planet that make the effort or the effect, it's all the planets at the same time that are going to the places that are, are doing that the thing happen. Mm -hmm. okay. The 11th house, his friend Galileo. Galileo, you know who was, uh, and the friend. 11th house, friend. Galileo discovered mm -hmm. Jupiter satellites. And it's, I suppose at the time Galileo was okay with the church <laughs> because he <laughs> yeah. finished birth. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, I, I don't see what is after. 1615? 8th house, house in 1915. Uh, it's uh, sorry, 1615. 8th house, and people, people claim, claim that his mother is a witch. 
Yes, because the mother was very knowledgeable in relation with natural things and natural remedies. And because oh, okay. was the time, the time that was the hunt to the witches in Europe at this time. And uh, this is one of the things that uh, happened with Galileo, because Galileo said that the earth was round, or uh, that, uh, you know, and uh, they born because he was uh, saying the thing that was not in relation with a Christian relation. Mm. I suppose that was the time of the Inquisition or something like that. It was very hard time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have. And, uh, and in 1920, it's the first house mother was in the prison. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So moving further, we have 1911. Fourth house, first wife died. Yes. The first wife. Jupiter, Sun, Mercury, die. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, in uh, 1612, he was in the fifth house, then Mercury, five, Mercury was in Pisces. He wrote and he published, he published this kind of calendar I think that during uh, six or, si or seven years and after he stopped was for the weather, but it was for the position of the planet too. Okay. Okay. In uh, sex house, Venus, Venus, with land, he married again. He find a second wife. And it was very funny because he did comment that the second wife was better than the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes it's interesting what we find in the books. Um, Mercury and Bingo in uh, 17, but this is seven years, and Mercury was in this period that he was writing about weather and the calendar and political forecasts. He started to do a political and this put him in a very bad position. Then Mercury from the, the 10th house, then Mercury is uh, in, uh, in Virgo with Mars. And he did that seven years then from Virgo to Pisces. All this period that was between house, his rushy four house and ten house, then these years he was doing that. Of course, when come the religious uh, Catholic reform, they proposed to him become convert, convert to the, to the other religion, I suppose I was Protestant, and he refused, because he refused, he need to move then he changed of, of the, the, um, the moon, the, the, the home, need to go to another place, and he moved to Ulm, that is another city. This is, this is very interesting because uh, it was a war, and he became an advisor with astrology. I like that. He became an advisor for the general that was in the command at this moment, but it was not in his country because he needed to leave his country with the problem of the religion. And he was not happy with his country, you know? Then, uh, whatever. The ninth house. The ninth house. I think the ninth house is very, very important for him. Yes. Whenever, uh, we've seen is that whenever any planet moves into his ninth house or Mercury or some other planet is moving into his ninth house. There's a f ninth house in relation is is in relation with political, is in relation with other countries, is in relation with uh, Sagittarius. The the sign of Sagittarius is the ninth sign. Then everything that is with political religion uh, moved to another country. Uh, a spirit, you know, is related to ninth house. And he was a philosopher. And it was not only a mathematician, 
was a philosopher. Then this, I think, is the reason that the ninth house is so important. Okay, he died when he was in the eleventh house. Okay. Mm. Moon was with Jupiter. Mars was with Rahu. Uh, Saturn was in Leo. Venus was in Scorpio. The Sun Mercury was with Saturn. Mm. Okay. okay. So Lagna Lord was with Saturn. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have some questions? No, I know, but it I know that I was going really fast. I know. The <laughs> I, I advice for you is to your chart. Okay. To the past. Look what are the important uh, events in your past. Okay. At what age? In your personal chart. If okay. you with the work, you take a look what was doing Saturn. Okay. If you have a problem with family, home, buy a property, or whatever, with the moon, where the moon was and what the moon was touching. But do photocopies of your chart, move only one planet at a time, the planet that is related with what you are looking for. Oh, if you are looking okay. for children, you go to Jupiter, okay. and you take a look when you have the children. Okay. Sometimes, okay. sometimes with this method, you can do multiplication of the time of birth. Okay. 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 Yes. So uh, with this, uh, we come to an end and thank you Nora, we will take this up again with you some other time for any other uh, uh, chart and <laughs> yes and we will also, we will also provide, uh, invite our audience some time you know on a live uh, show to ask them for their chart so that Nora can predict bang on for your future.